Hi, this is JJ Singh from Partab University. We're going to continue on with our exploration of the textbook Elementary Algebra by John Redden. This is Chapter 1, Section 2, Adding and Subtracting Integers. So our goals here are that we're going to learn how to add and subtract sign integers. We're going to translate English sentences involving addition into subtraction into mathematical expressions or mathematical statements. And we're also going to figure out what the distance is between any two numbers on our friendly neighborhood number line. So, let's start by talking about addition and subtraction. Visualize adding 3 and 2 on the number line, 3 plus 2, okay? You're going to move 3 units to the right. Remember that moving to the right makes something more positive or less negative. If you happen to be on this side and you move to the right, you're becoming less negative. Once you pass zero, you're becoming more and more positive. And going the opposite way, if you're on this side and you move to the left, you're becoming more negative. If you're on this side and you're moving to the left, you're becoming less and less positive until you hit zero, and then you start becoming more and more negative. So anyway, here you have one positive number being added on to another positive number. So it's going to become even more positive, right? you got some positive here and some more positive there, and together you have even more positive. So you start at the origin, which is everything, where everything starts, right? Zero. And you hop over one, two, three. And then you hop over another one, two, and you end up with five, right? So now just imagine we're looking on the other side of this mirror here, and we're adding two negative numbers which are exactly the same in magnitude as, as our previous example, except now they're both negative. So we've got negative 3 being added on to negative 2. So if you take a negative number and you add on another negative number, you get some negative plus some more negative, you get even more negative. Okay, so you, negative 3 means you hop 3 to the left. So you go 1, 2, 3, and I'm at the negative 3 mark, and then I want to add on another negative 2, so I'm going to hop another 2 spots to the left, 1, 2, and I'm at negative 5. So this is what we've learned from this. Positive number plus a positive number is a positive number. And in fact, it's going to be a bigger positive number than either of these, a more positive number than either of these positive numbers. Negative number plus a negative number equals a negative number, and it's going to be a more negative number than either of these negative numbers. So let's try it with when we have one number that's positive and one that's negative. Well, as you can imagine, the positive number moves us to the right, and the negative number moves us to the left. So it's really going to depend what it has a bigger magnitude, the positive number or the negative number, in terms of what we end up with. If we were adding 3 plus negative 3, we'd go 3 to the right and 3 to the left, and we'd end up right where we started at the origin. So that would be 0. If we start with 3 and we add on a negative number that's of larger magnitude than 3, then that means we're going to go past the origin to the left, and so we're in negative territory, so the result is going to be negative. If, uh, and that's, that's what is the case here, we're adding 3 plus negative 7. 3 gives us 3 hops to the right, 1, 2, 3. Negative 7 gives us 7 hops to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so we end up with negative 4. Okay, now what if this negative number had been sm of lesser magnitude than 3? Let's say we'd been adding 3 plus negative 2. Then we would have gone 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3, and then we would have only gone 2 to the left, 1, 2. So you notice here the negative number in that example, which is not written here, but let's say it was 3 plus negative 2. In that example, the negative number is of smaller magnitude than the positive number, and so you're not going to go past the origin. You're going to stay on the right side of the origin, and so you're going to be in positive territory, and the result in such a situation is going to be a positive number, which in, in that ex particular example would be 1, because you went from the origin, you went 1, 2, 3 to the right, and then 1, 2 to the left, and so you end up at 1. So, anyway, let's go back to our example here uh, that was given to us, 3 plus negative 7. And we can show that when you, when you write 3 plus negative 7, you can just have this negative cancel out the, the positive. Adding a negative number is the same as subtracting the opposite of that number, okay? 
So adding a negative 7 is the same as subtracting a positive 7. And so 3 minus positive 7, or 3 minus 7, is equal to negative 4, which we just saw up here. So some people will say, well, maybe a positive number plus a negative number is a negative, but that's not true. Okay, here you have 7 plus negative 3, and again, uh, this is an example where you've got a negative number which is of smaller magnitude than the positive number, and so we're going to the positive number will prevail. We'll be in, we'll stay in positive territory. We won't go to the left of the origin, and we'll end up with a positive result. So seven plus negative three is the same as seven minus positive three, and so that's seven minus three. So the, the result is positive four. And if you're going to show it on here, you would show well you can't see where the seven mark is, but you would show that you took seven hops to the right to get to seven, and then you took three hops to the left for negative three. You went one, two, three hops to the left, and you ended up with four, which is exactly what's shown here. So, the result of adding numbers with unlike signs may be positive or negative. The sign of the result is the same as the sign of the number with the greatest distance from the origin, which is the, the number that has the largest magnitude, okay? So, for example, the following result depends on the sign of the number 12 because it's further, farther from the 0 than the 5. Okay, so you have 12 plus negative 5. Negative 5 is a negative number that's closer to the origin than, than the 12 is from the origin. So you're going to end up with a positive number because the positive number being added to the negative number, that positive number is of larger magnitude than the negative number. So 12 plus negative 5 is the same as... 12 minus positive 5, 12 minus 5 is 7, okay? Um, if instead we had started with that negative, uh, negative number of negative 12, which is further away from the uh, origin than this positive number, and we're adding this negative number and this positive number together, here the negative number is of larger magnitude than the positive number, so we're going to stay, the negative number will prevail the negativity will prevail, you could say, and so we're going to stay in negative territory. So negative 12 plus 5 means hop 12 over to the left, and then hop 5 to the right, and you'll end up with negative 7. Okay. So here's another example: 14 plus negative 25 is the same as 14 minus positive 25, which is 14 minus 25, which is negative 11, as you can see here. Okay, 14 plus negative 25, 14 minus 25, negative 11. The 14 is of smaller magnitude than the 25, meaning it's closer to the origin, so the negativity will prevail, we'll end up with a negative number. Now, we have some properties of addition here. Let's say you have some, some, uh, some real numbers. It could be any, real, any set of three real numbers. We're going to call them A, B, and C. Let's just start by talking about A, okay? A plus 0 is the same as 0 plus A which is A. Because if you take A and you move zero spots away from it, then you end up with A because you haven't moved at all. If you have start with zero and you add A, you're starting at zero and you're moving A spots away from it, so you're at the number A. Okay. Like on our number line, let's say A was three. Okay, so a zero plus three is three, right? Because you go from 0, you move 3 spots away from it, and so you're at 3. And so the same would be true, 0 plus 2 would be 2, 0 plus 1 would be 1, 0 plus 4 would be 4, 0 plus 5 would be 5, 0 plus 6 would be 6. So, And same with, with uh, irrational numbers like pi. 0 plus pi would be pi, because you'd be right about here. Okay, 0 plus 3.14 would put you at 3.14, right? So. So that would work with uh, irrational numbers like pi as well. It's any real number, okay? Real numbers can be rational or irrational, remember? So additive inverse property. Now we're going to talk about taking A. Now A can be a positive or a negative number. We don't know what it is, all right? In the example I just showed you, it was a positive number. But let's say A is a negative number. It could be a negative number. We're going to add the opposite of it. Negative a is the opposite of a, right? So that means if a is negative 7, then negative a is positive 7. 
which is the opposite of negative 7, so it's positive 7. So when you add negative 7 and positive 7, you end up with 0, because you're moving, in this case, a is negative, so you're moving a spots to the left in the negative direction, and then you're adding a negative a, which is, as it turns out, is positive. Hopefully this isn't too confusing. This is positive, what you have in the brackets here, that's a positive number, even though it has a negative sign, because a is negative. Negative times negative cancels out. It's the same as negative 1 times negative 7. So negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7. Okay, so this is this is positive in here. This is negative out here, because this is still the negative 7 that we, we set as a. a equals negative 7. Okay, so you take a negative number, you've moved that many spots to the left, okay, from the origin. You start at the origin, you move to the left, and then you're adding the opposite of that, so you're moving the same number of spots in the opposite direction. You move seven spots this way, and then you move seven spots that way, and so you're still at zero, okay? You move the exact same distance in the opposite direction. And the same applies here if you're adding you can put the the uh, initial number to the to the right uh, when you're adding. Just like when you added zero plus uh, you added a plus zero here, you could switch a row and have zero plus a. Same here, you could have a plus negative a, switch a row and have negative a plus a. Okay, so either way, it works out to zero. If a is negative 7, you've got negative times negative 7, which is the same as negative 1 times negative 7, which is the same as positive 7, so everything in the brackets is a positive 7. And you're adding a, which is negative 7, which is negative 7. So 7 plus negative 7 means from the origin, let's say this is the origin, from the origin, you're starting with positive 7, so you're moving 7 spots to the right, into positive territory, and then you're adding a, which was negative 7, so you're going to move 7 spots to the left now. So you move the exact same distance to the left, and you end up with the, with the origin again. Okay, so those are additive properties. You also have associative properties. Associative, what does it mean when you associate with someone? You're part of an association. That means you're part of some sort of group with other people, right? So you're grouping with other people. Or in this case, you're grouping with other elements. Here you have A and B grouped together, A plus B, and they're grouped together in the brackets. And then you have C also being added on, but it's outside the bracket. So the associated property says you don't have to just you don't have to group A and B together and add them up first before you add on C. You could also do it like this. You could add A on to whatever the result of the sum of the other two numbers is. In this case, B and C are grouped together in the brackets. Okay, so that's the associative property. B over here is associating with A. On this side of the equation, B is associating with C. But they're all going to be added up together anyway, so it doesn't really matter which ones you add up first. Commutative property, what, what does it mean when people say they commute to work? That means they're going back and forth to work all the time, back and forth, back and forth. So the order is they're going one way and then they're going another way. Okay, it's a question of order. So commutative property means that you can order A plus B or you can order them B plus A. Okay, just like up here you had A plus 0 or you had 0 plus A. This number doesn't have to be 0, it could be B. So you could have A plus B and switch them around and have B plus A. Either way, you're adding them together anyway, so it doesn't really matter what direction they're they're being added up in. Okay, doesn't work with subtraction. Okay, we're just talking about addition here. These things don't necessarily work with subtraction. Okay, so now let's start with an example. Five plus zero. Okay, adding zero to any real number results in the same number. So you're starting with something that's five spots to the right of the origin. Adding zero means you're moving zero places away from it. When you move zero places away from somewhere, you're really not moving anywhere, so you're still at the five. Okay, what about 10 plus negative 10? Adding opposites results in zero, because you're moving 10 to the right when you get to 10, and then you add negative 10, means you need to now move 10 to the left. Okay, so you start from the origin, move it 
10 spots to the right, now you're moving 10 spots to the left, you end up at the origin again. And 10 plus negative 10 is the same as 10 minus positive 10, which is 10 minus 10, which is 0. Okay, so let's take another example here now. Let's say we have 3 plus 7, which are grouped together, and we're going to add on 4. Okay, so that means we have to add these numbers together first, because they're in the brackets. So, 3 plus 7, and then add on 4. 3 plus 7 is 10, okay, so you have 10 plus 4, and that's 14. Okay, so what if the grouping wasn't with 7 and 3 together, it was with the 7 and the 4 together? Then you'd have to add 3 plus the result of this sum, which is 7 plus 4. So, if we do it that way, you'll notice it's 3 plus the sum 7 plus 4, and the sum 7 plus 4 is 11, so you end up with 3 plus 11, which is 14. This is just illustrating that you end up with the same result, 14, whether you're doing it this way or you're doing it that way. So this is really just il illustrating the associative property we learned up here, a plus b, and then add on c, or you could add a to whatever the sum of b plus c is. That's the associative property. Okay? So changing the grouping of the numbers does not change the result. And that's just what this is showing here. Adding the 3 and 7 first, and then adding the 4, or adding the 3 to the sum of the 7 and the 4 is the same, 14 in either case. So addition is commuta uh, commutative. Okay, The order doesn't matter. 2 plus 9 equals 9 plus 2. All right? 2 plus 9 is 11. 9 plus 2 is 11. Same thing. But subtraction, you can't do stuff like that. Subtraction is not the same, all right? 2 minus 9 is negative 7. 9 minus 2, okay, here we've switched them around. I'm subtracting still, this positive 2, subtracting positive 9. Here we're taking positive 9, subtracting positive 2. Okay, 9 minus 2 is 7. It's not the same as negative 7, all right? So, commutative property does not work for subtraction. It only works for addition. So, we'll use these properties along with a double negative property to perform more involved sequential operations. So, we'll make a rule to first replace all sequential operations with either addition or subtraction, and then perform the operation from left to right. So, here we have 4 minus negative 10 plus a negative 5. Okay? So we're going to replace these operation and then go from left to right. So 4 minus negative 10 is the same as the, the negatives cancel out, right? The negative, the negative property means the negatives cancel out. So we're going to end up with, instead of 4 minus negative 10, 4 plus 10. And that's what we, should, we see over here. Then if we're adding a negative 5, it's, same, it's the same as subtracting a positive 5. So 4 plus 10 minus 5 which is 4 plus 10 is 14, okay, so that's 14 minus 5, 14 minus 5 is 9, all right, here's another example, we've got negative 3 plus negative 8 minus negative 7, what happens here is that when you add a negative number, it's the same as subtracting the positive, the, or the opposite of that negative number, which is the positive 8 in this case, so instead of negative 3 plus negative 8, it's going to be negative 3 minus 8, which is what we see over here, negative 3 minus 8. And the rest of this is subtracting a negative number, which is the same as the negatives canceling out, and you're ending up with positive 7, so a plus 7, okay? And instead of subtracting the negative 7, you add the opposite of the negative 7, which is the positive 7, okay, because of the double negatives. So minus 3, or I'm sorry, negative 3 minus 8 plus 7. Negative 3 minus 8 is the same as negative 11 because you're moving three spots in negative territory and then you're moving another eight spots in negative territory so you're at the negative 11 mark. And then you're moving seven spots in the opposite direction because this is positive. So from negative 11 you're moving seven spots to the right so you end up at negative 4. Okay? Now there's also this question. It doesn't show you the work. Let's just do it um, in our minds here. 
Okay, 12 minus negative 9. What's a double negative property mean? It means these two negatives cancel out. So instead of 12 minus positive 9, we're going to have 12 plus 9. Now what's 12 plus 9? That's actually 21. You move 10, or 12 spots to the right. You move another 9 spots to the right, you end up with 21. Okay. Um, just remember that, that this left part is 21. Okay. Then we're going to add negative 6. Adding a negative number is the same as subtracting the opposite of that negative number, which is positive 6. So we're going to subtract positive 6 from, what was this? 21. 21 minus 6 is 15. You have 21 spots on the right, and then you move 6 spots to the left, you end up at the 15 mark. Okay? There's a video to show you how to do this. You can watch that on your own. Remember that this book is available at flatworldknowledge.com, okay, which is this website here. That's the book we're using by John Redden. Okay, now what we're going to learn how to do is we're going to take something that's written in English and then we're going to make it into an equation instead, okay? So if there's words like the sum, increased by, more than, plus, added to, total, these all refer to addition, which is the addition sign right here, okay? Difference, decreased by, subtracted from, less, minus. Some people even say take away. All right, that's the subtraction operation, and that's the subtraction sign here. So what's the difference of 7 and minus 3? Okay, the difference of 7 and minus 3. So because the 7 is listed first, we're going to take 7, and then we're going to subtract whatever this number is. And this number happens to be a negative number. It's negative 3. Okay. So we're going to go 7 minus negative 3. And what happens with the double negatives? Well, they cancel, become a positive. So instead of 7 minus negative 3, you end up with 7 plus 3, which is equal to 10. So the difference of 7 and negative 3 is 10. Right there. Okay. Now here's another question. What's the sum of the first five positive integers? Remember, positive integers are basically the natural numbers that you first learned when you were first learning how to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, la, 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 la. Okay, so what are the first five of those positive integers? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The initial keyword is sum. Okay, what's the sum? So that means we're adding. And here's the set of what those integers are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Remember that 0 is not positive or negative, so we can't count that. Okay, so we're not talking about whole numbers here. We're talking about uh, natural numbers. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Okay, that's the sum. We're adding them all. And it doesn't show the work here, but let's just try and remember this. 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay, so remember that that part's 3. And we're going to add on another 3. So 3 plus 3 is 6. Okay, so just remember that this is 6. And then we're going to add on 4. 6 plus 4 is 10. Okay, so remember that this first part is 10. And we're going to add on 5. So 10 plus 5 is 15. Okay, so here's another example. What is 10 subtracted from the sum of 8 and 6? Okay, subtracted from. This is very important. It's not saying what is 10 minus the sum of 8 plus 6. It's saying subtracted from. If something's being subtracted from something, that means it's going to go on the right. Okay? It's being taken away from something else. Right? So if you remember back to when you used to say take away, when you're taking away something, you're putting the minus sign here, a subtraction sign here, and then you're putting the thing that you're taking away to the right of that, right? Subtraction is not commutative, so you have to be careful to subtract in the right order, in the correct order. So, 8 and 6 are going to be summed up first, which means they're going to be added up, which means you got a plus sign, 8 plus 6, and we know 8 plus 6 is 14, and then we're going to take away 10 from that, subtract 10 from that sum. So we're going to have 14 right here. 14 minus 10, okay, which is 4. So remember that 
we do not want to say subtracted from means this because it does definitely not mean that okay here you have 8 plus 6 being subtracted from 10 all right it's not 10 being subtracted from anything it's 8 plus 6 being subtracted from 10 so uh, we got the answer 4 already okay distance on a number line remember what absolute values were it was the distance from something to 0 okay so whether it's a positive 6 or a negative 6 the absolute value is positive 6 because in either of those cases it's 6 units away from the origin it's either 6 to the right in the case of positive 6 or it's 6 to the left in the case of negative 6 so for any real numbers a and b the distance formula for, the, for a number line is the absolute value of the difference between those numbers b minus a or actually it could be a minus b as long as you're taking the absolute value in this case it doesn't matter all right now just be careful of that the commutative property does not apply to subtraction but in this case I'm letting it go because I'm taking the absolute value all right so what does this mean d is just distance what's the distance between 2 and 7 on a number line well if we have 2 here and we have 7 there we know that 7 is more positive than 2 7 is to the right of 2 right so we can imagine 7 being here b is 7 a is 2 okay and if we look at a graph we can see that to get from 2 to 7 you have to hop 5 units 1 2 3 4 5 or if you're going the other way you have to hop 5 units 2 1 2 3 4 5 okay the distance from a to b is the same as distance from b to a if i say i live 5 miles from my grandma's house how far does my grandma live from my house she also lives five miles away right so the distance is the same okay now here we took d equals seven minus two which is seven minus two absolute value of that seven minus two is five absolute value of five is also five okay because uh, the absolute value of a number is the same as that number the absolute value of a negative number is the opposite of that negative number so if it had been absolute value negative 5 we would have gotten positive 5 as a result as well and actually if you notice that if instead of having b equals 7 and a equals 2 if you'd made b equal to 2 and a equal to 7 then you would have had 2 minus 7 absolute value of 2 minus 7 instead of absolute value of 7 minus 2 what's 2 minus 7 well it's negative 5 right so here you would have had the absolute value of negative 5, which is again 5. So measuring my house from my grandma's house, or measuring my grandma's house from my house, same distance, and it doesn't actually matter whether my grandma is closer to the origin or I'm closer to the origin. Either way, you subtract it, you end up with the same result. Okay, so what's the diff distance between negative 4 and, and positive 7? Well, you use this formula again d equals absolute value b minus a and here we're just going to say a equals negative 4 and b equals positive 7 okay which makes sense based on this graph because here we've got a positive number it's going to be more to the right and we've got a negative number it's going to be more to the left okay and that's true here b is a positive number more to the right a is a negative number more to the left so 7 minus negative 4 is the same as 7 plus 4. The negatives cancel out. Okay. We want to take the absolute value of that difference, which is the absolute value of this sum over here. Absolute value of 7 plus 4 is absolute value of 11, which is 11. Okay. Now, here's an illustration showing what I was mentioning earlier that it doesn't matter what order we put these in. If we say a is negative 4 and b is positive 7, we get what would you we, what we just saw 7 minus negative 4 7 plus 4 11 take the absolute value of that end up with 11 if we did it the other way we had a being the 7 and b being the minus 4 then we would be subtracting b minus a which is negative 4 minus 7 okay 
taking the absolute value of that. So negative 4 minus 7 is negative 11. Absolute value of that is 11. Okay? So it doesn't matter which points are used for A and B. The absolute value is always ensures a positive result. So you don't have to have it like it's shown here, where B is to the right of A. B could be to the left of A. Either way, you're going to end up with the same result. Okay? So, here's another question. What's the distance between negative 12 and negative 9 on the number line? Well, it doesn't show the work here, but let's just do this in our minds. We're going to take a difference between these two numbers, right? So we have to be careful the negative and the positive signs here. Negative 12 minus negative 9. Well, you got a minus and then a negative 9. So those double the double negative means you just end up with a positive in here. So you're going to have negative 12 plus 9. And what's negative 12 plus 9? Well, 12 to the left, 9 to the right is negative 3. Okay. But remember, a distance is always an absolute value. Okay. Distance can't be negative, right? So distance being an absolute value, you ended up with negative 3 here. You've got to take the absolute value of that, which is positive 3. Okay, And you can watch the video for the, the explanation if you want as well. So what did we learn? A positive number added to a positive number is also a positive. It's even more positive. Negative number added to a negative number is negative, even more negative. And the sign of a positive number added to a negative number is the same as the sign of the number with the greatest distance from the origin. Okay, The positive number is bigger, the positivity will prevail, the result's positive. The negative number is bigger, and by, I shouldn't say bigger, I should say of uh, larger magnitude. Okay, Because by magnitude I mean how far is it from the origin. So if that negative number, negative numbers are always smaller than positive numbers by the way. So when I say negative number is of larger magnitude than the positive number, that's the case in which negativity prevails. The result is also negative. Addition is commutative. Subtraction is not commutative. Okay, Addition, you can mix up the order in which you're adding things up. Subtraction, you can't do that. Okay, um, If your brother is taller than you and you're subtracting his height minus your height, you're going to end up with a positive number. If you're smaller than your brother, and you're shorter than your brother, which is true if your brother's taller than you, and you're subtracting your height minus your brother's height, you're going to end up with a negative number. Okay, So you can't just screw with the order when you're dealing with subtraction. It's not commutative. Addition is, if you're going to add up your height with your brother's height, doesn't mean doesn't matter if you go your height plus brother's height or brother's height plus your height. Either way, you're adding them up. Okay, so when simplifying, it's uh, best practice to first replace sequential operations and then work with the operations of addition and subtraction from left to right. The distance between any two numbers on a number line is the absolute value of their difference. In other words, given any real numbers A and B, you can use the formula D equals absolute value of the difference, B minus A, or like I said, it could be A minus B instead. Take the absolute value of that difference, and you'll end up with the distance D which is the distance between the two points. Here you've got your exercises, the answers to the posit or the odd number exercises will be listed at the end. The answers to the even number exercises won't. Okay. And there are a couple of discussion questions for which you won't have answers at all. And those are these three questions here. So these questions share an example of adding sign numbers in a real world application. Demonstrate the associated property of addition with any three real numbers. Show that subtraction is not commutative. Okay, so these are all things that I think you can figure out how to do based on what we've talked about.